Letter five of De Smet's Letters and Sketches, eighteen forty one to eighteen forty two, by Father Pierre Jean De Smet. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Fort Hall, August sixteenth, eighteen forty one. Reverend and dear Father Provincial, it was on the eve of the beautiful festival of the Assumption that we met the vanguard of the Flatheads. We met under the happiest auspices and our joy was proportionate the joy of the savage is not openly manifested that of our dear neophytes was tranquil but from the beaming serenity of their looks and the feeling manner in which they pressed our hands it was easy to perceive that like the joy which has its source in virtue theirs was heartfelt and profound what had they not done to obtain a mission of black gowns for twenty years they had not ceased to supplicate the father of mercies for twenty years in compliance with the counsels of the poor iroquois who had established themselves in their tribe they had conformed as nearly as they could to our creed our manners and even to our religious practices in what catholic parish was the sunday for example ever more religiously observed during the ten years just elapsed four deputations each starting from the banks of the bitter root on which they usually assembled had courageously ventured to st louis over a space of three thousand miles over mountains and valleys infested by blackfeet and other hostile tribes of the first deputation which started in eighteen thirty one three died of diseases produced by the change of climate the second embassy reached its destination but owing to the great want of missionaries in the diocese of st louis received nothing but promises the third which set out in eighteen thirty seven consisted of five members all of whom were unmercifully massacred by the sioux all these crosses however were insufficient to abate their zeal in eighteen thirty nine they sent two iroquois deputies one of whom was named peter and the other young ignatius to distinguish him from another called old ignatius these they earnestly advised to make still more pressing entreaties to obtain the long-sought blessing a black gown to conduct them to heaven their prayers were at length heard even beyond their hopes one black gown was granted together with a promise of more if necessary for their greater good while peter returned in haste to the tribe to acquaint them with the complete success of their mission ignatius remained at westport to accompany the promised missionary i had the happiness to be that missionary i visited the nation and became acquainted in person with their wants their dispositions and the necessities of the neighboring tribes after an absence of a year i was now returning to them no longer alone but with two fathers three brothers laborers and all that was essential to the success of the expedition they themselves had traveled upwards of eight hundred miles to meet us and now that we were together both parties were full of vigor and hope what joy must not these good indians at that moment have experienced being unable however to express their happiness they were silent their silence surely could not be ascribed to a deficiency of intelligence or a want of sentiment for the flatheads are full of feeling and many are truly intelligent these two were the elite of the nation judge of it by what follows the chief of this little embassy portrayed himself in the following address to his companions a few days subsequently on viewing the plan of the first hamlet my dear children said he i am but an ignorant and wicked man yet i thank the great spirit for the favors which he has conferred on us and entering here into an admirable detail he concluded thus yes my dear friends my heart has found content notwithstanding my wickedness i despair not of the goodness of god 
henceforth i wish to live only that i may pray i will never abandon prayer religion i will pray until the end of my life and when i die i will commit myself into the hands of the author of life if he condemn me i shall submit to his will for i have deserved punishment if he save me i shall bless him for ever once more then my heart has found content what shall we do to evince the love we bear our fathers here he made practical resolutions but i must hasten to commemorate the zeal of each of those who formed the embassy simon who had been baptized the preceding year was the oldest of the nation and was so burdened with the weight of years that even when seated he needed a stick for his support yet he had no sooner ascertained that we were on our route to join the tribe than mounting his horse and mingling with the young warriors who were prepared to go forth to meet us he said my children i shall accompany you if i die on the way our fathers at least will know the cause of my death during the course of the journey he repeatedly exhorted his companions courage my children he would say remember that we are going to the presence of our fathers and urging his steed forward whip in hand he led on his youthful followers at the rate of fifty miles per day francis a boy from six to seven years old grandson of simon was an orphan from the very cradle having served at the altar the preceding year he would not be refused permission to accompany his grandfather his heart told him that he was about to recover father and mother and enjoy all the happiness that loving parents can bestow ignatius who had advised the fourth deputation and had been a member of it who had succeeded in his mission and introduced the first black gown into the tribe who had just recently exposed himself to new dangers in order to introduce others had crowned his zealous exertions by running for days without eating or drinking solely that he might reach us the sooner pilchimo his companion and brother to one of the martyrs of the third deputation was a young warrior already reputed brave among the brave the preceding year his presence of mind and his courage had saved seventy of his brethren in arms from the fury of nearly nineteen hundred blackfeet francis xavier was the son of old ignatius who had been the leader of the second and third deputation and had fallen a victim to his devotion to the cause of religion and of his brethren francis xavier had gone to st louis at the age of ten in the company of his courageous father solely that he might have the happiness of receiving baptism he had finally attached himself without reserve to the service of the mission and supplied our table with a daily mess of fish gabriel who was of mixed blood but an adopted child of the nation was interpreter for the missionaries being the first to join us on the banks of the green river he merited the title of precursor of the flatheads his bravery and zeal had four times induced him to travel for our sakes over a space of four hundred miles which separated us from the great camp such were they who now greeted us let them tell their own story they had prayed daily to obtain for me a happy journey and a speedy return their brethren continued in the same good disposition almost all even children and old men knew by heart the prayers which i had taught them the preceding year twice on every weekday and three times on each sunday the assembled tribe recited prayers in common whenever they moved their camp they carried with them as an ark of safety the box of ornaments left in their custody five or six children whom i had baptized went to heaven during my absence the very morrow of my departure a young warrior whom i had baptized the day previous died in consequence of a wound received from the blackfeet about three months before 
another who had accompanied me as far as the fort of the crows and was as yet but a catechumen died of sickness and returning to the tribe but in such happy dispositions that his mother was perfectly consoled for his loss by the conviction that his soul was in heaven a girl about twelve years of age seeing herself on the point of dying had solicited baptism with such earnestness that she was baptized by peter the iroquois and received the name of mary after having sung a canticle in a stronger voice than usual she died saying oh how beautiful i see mary my mother so many favors from heaven were calculated to instigate the malice of hell the enemies of salvation had accordingly attempted to sow the cockle among the good grain by suggesting to the chiefs of the tribe that my conduct would be like that of so many others who once gone had never returned but the great chief had invariably replied you wrong our father he is not double-tongued like so many others he has said i will return and he will return i am sure the interpreter added that it was this conviction which had impelled the venerable old man notwithstanding his advanced age to place himself at the head of the detachment bound for green river that they had arrived at the rendezvous on the first of july which was the appointed day that they had remained there till the sixteenth and would have continued to occupy the same position had not the scarcity of provisions obliged them to depart he stated also that the whole tribe had determined to fix upon some spot as a site for a permanent village that with this view they had already chosen two places which they believed to be suitable that nothing but our presence was required to confirm their determination and they relied with such implicit confidence on our speedy arrival that the great chief on starting from green river had left there three men to await us advising them to hold that position until no longer tenable here i have much to relate that is not less edifying than serious but before i enter upon the chapter of noble actions i must conclude what i had commenced in my preceding letter but i feel bound before all to pay mr ermatinger the captain of fort hall the tribute of gratitude which we owe him although a protestant by birth this noble englishman gave us a most friendly reception not only did he repeatedly invite us to his table and sell us at first cost or at one-third of its value in a country so remote whatever we required but he also added as pure gifts many articles which he believed would be particularly acceptable he did more he promised to recommend us to the good will of the governor of the honourable english company who was already prepossessed in our favour and what is still more deserving of praise he assured us that he would second our ministry among the populous nation of the snakes with whom he has frequent intercourse so much zeal and generosity give him a claim to our esteem and gratitude may heaven return to him a hundredfold the benefits he has conferred on us it was at fort hall that we took our final leave of the american colony with which we had till then pursued the same route it was previously to this while we were yet at green river that those who came to that wild region merely for information or pleasure had turned back with some fewer illusions than when they had started out upon the journey they were five or six in number among them was a young englishman who had been our messmate from st louis in taking leave of us this young man who was in many respects estimable assured us that if providence should ever again throw us together the meeting would give him the highest satisfaction and that he would always be happy to do us all the service in his power he was of a good english family and like most of his countrymen fond of travel he had already seen the four quarters of the globe but qui multum peregrinantur he cherished so many prejudices however against the catholic religion 
that despite all our good wishes we were of no service to him in the most essential relation we recommended him to our friends i have treasured up one of his beautiful reflections we must travel in the desert to witness the watchful care of providence over the wants of men they who had started purely with the design of seeking their fortune in california and were pursuing their enterprise with the constancy which is characteristic of americans had left us but a few days before our arrival at the fort in the vicinity of the boiling springs which empty into bear river there now remained with us but a few of the party who had come to the fort in order to revictual among the latter were the leader of the colony and a reputed deacon of the methodist sect both were of a peaceable disposition and manifested for us the highest regard but the former like so many others being very indifferent as to religious matters held as a maxim that it was best to have no religion or else to adopt that of the country in which we live and wishing to display his great bible erudition he in proof of his paradox cited as a text of st paul the ancient proverb si fueris rome romano vivite more the minister was of the same opinion yet he wished some religion it being well understood that his was the best i say his because he was neither a methodist a protestant nor a catholic not even a christian he maintained that a jew a turk or an idolater may be as agreeable as any other in the sight of god for the proof of his doctrine he relied strange to say on the authority of st paul and particularly on this text unus dominus una fides in fact these were the very words with which he greeted us the first time we saw him and which formed the subject of a long valedictory discourse that he delivered in one of the meeting-houses of westport previous to his departure for his western mission by whom was he sent we have never ascertained his zeal frequently induced him to dispute with us it was not difficult to show him that his ideas with the exception of one were vague and fluctuating he acknowledged it himself but after having wandered from point to point he always returned to his favourite tenet which according to him was the fundamental principle of all true belief that the love of god is the first of duties and that to inculcate it we must be tolerant this was his strongest point of support the foundation of all his reasoning and the stimulus of his zeal the term catholic according to him was but another word for love and philanthropy he carried his absurdities and contradictions so far that he excited the hilarity of the whole camp his ingenuous simplicity was even greater than his tolerance for example he once said to me yesterday one of the members of my persuasion returned to me a book which i had lent him stating that it contained an exposition of the roman creed when i asked him his opinion of it he replied that the book was full of errors yet it was an exposition of methodist principles that i had given him witness said he with emphasis the blinding influence of prejudice i had daily conversations with some one of the caravan and frequently with several and although americans are slow to change their creed we had the consolation to relieve our travelling companions of a heavy load of prejudice against our holy religion they parted from us exhibiting signs of respect and veneration nay even of preference for catholicity these controversies so completely engrossed my mind my heart and my senses that i arrived almost unconsciously on the banks of snake river here a great danger and a profitable lesson awaited us but before speaking of the adventures of our journey i shall conclude what remains to be related of the country we traversed we halted with our narrative upon the shore of the sweetwater this stream is one of the most beautiful tributaries of the platte 
it owes its name indeed to the purity of its waters it is distinguished from its fellow tributaries by the numerous wanderings of its current a proof that the fall of its bed is but slight but suddenly changing its course we see or rather hear it rushing impetuously through a long cleft in a chain of mountains these mountains which harmonize well with the torrent exhibit the most picturesque scenes travellers have named this spot the devil's entrance in my opinion they should have rather called it heaven's avenue for if it resembles hell on account of the frightful disorder which frowns around it it is still a mere passage and it should rather be compared to the way of heaven on account of the scene to which it leads imagine in short two rows of rocks rising perpendicularly to a wonderful height and at the foot of these shapeless walls a winding bed broken encumbered with trunks of trees with rubbish and with timber of all dimensions while in the midst of this chaos of obstacles the roaring waves force a passage now rushing with fury then swelling with majesty and anon spreading with gentleness according as they find in their course a wider or more straitened passage above these moving and noisy scenes the eye discerns masses of shadow here relieved by a glance of day there deepening in their gloom by the foliage of a cedar or pine till finally as the sight travels through the long vista of lofty galleries it is greeted by a distant perspective of such mild beauty that a sentiment of placid happiness steals upon the mind such is the spectacle we admired at the distance of nine or ten miles from the rock independence on the morning of sixth july i doubt whether the solitude of the carthusian monastery called la grande chartreuse of which so many wonders are related can at least at first sight offer greater attractions to him whom divine grace has called to a contemplative life as for me who am not called to such a state at least exclusively after an hour of raptures i began to understand the expression of the carthusian friar pulchrum transiuntibus and i hastened to proceed here we directed our course more and more towards the heights of the far west ascending sometimes clambering until we reached the summit from which we discovered another world on the seventh of july we were in sight of the immense oregon territory i will not presume to add to the many pompous descriptions which have been given of the spectacle now before us i shall say nothing either of the height the number or the variety of these peaks covered with eternal snows which rear their heads with menacing aspect to the heavens nor will i speak of the many streams descending from them and changing their course with unexpected suddenness nor of the extreme rarefication of the air with the consequent effect upon objects susceptible of contraction at so great an elevation all this is common but to the glory of the lord i must commemorate the imperious necessity i experienced of tracing his holy name upon a rock which towered preeminent among the grandeur around may that ever adorable name be to travellers a monument of our gratitude and a pledge of salvation henceforth we descended towards the pacific first by following and then by crossing the little and the great sandy rivers in the vicinity of the latter as the captain had mistaken one road for another the caravan wandered for three days at random i myself on a fine evening strayed from the rest i thought myself entirely lost how was i to act i did what every sincere believer would have done in the same circumstances i prayed and then urging on my horse i travelled several miles when it struck me that it would be prudent to retrace my steps i did so instantly and it was fortunate for the caravan was far behind i found it encamped still ignorant however of its position and on a soil so arid 
that our jaded beasts were necessitated to fast for the night days follow but resemble not each other two days subsequently we were surrounded with abundance filled with joy all once more united and on the banks of a river not less celebrated among the hunters of the west than the shores of the platte this river loses itself not far below in clefts of rocks said to be no less than two hundred miles in extent among which there are countless swarms of beavers although the trapper has never ventured to hunt them on account of the extreme peril of the enterprise at a certain period of the year both trappers and indians flock to this spot for the purpose of bartering all kinds of merchandise it was here but eight years ago the wagons that first undertook to cross the rocky mountains found the pillars of hercules and it was here too that we found the messenger of the flatheads to whom i have already alluded this river is the rio colorado of the west we rested two days upon its banks with the company of captain f who had just returned from california what they told us concerning that distant country dissipated many illusions and caused some of our companions who travelled for amusement to return on the twentieth of july we seriously thought of continuing our journey to a company like ours it was not an easy matter the remembrance of the expedition of bonneville was still fresh in the minds of all but our object was not the same we had no articles but such as were necessary they could be transported conveniently only by wagons we placed all our confidence in god we soon crossed the river and our equipage was seen coming in all directions over valleys and mountains we were compelled to clear a passage sometimes in the middle of a ravine sometimes in the declivity of a rock and frequently through bushes we travelled in this manner for ten days to reach bear river which flows through a wide and beautiful valley surrounded by lofty mountains and often intersected by inaccessible rocks we continued our march through it during eight successive days the river resembles in its course the form of a horseshoe and falls into the great salt lake which has no communication with the sea on our way we met several families of shoshones or snake indians and sochikos or uprooters they speak the same language and are both friends to the whites the only difference we could observe between them was that the latter were by far the poorer they formed a grotesque group such as is not to be seen in any other part of the indian territory represent to yourself a band of wretched horses disproportionate in all their outlines loaded with bags and boxes to a height equal to their own and these surmounted by rational beings young and old male and female in a variety of figures and costumes to which the pencil of a hogarth or a bruegel would scarcely do justice and you will have an idea of the scene we witnessed one of these animals scarcely four feet high had for its load four large sacks of dried meat two on each side above which were tied several other objects terminating in a kind of platform on the back of the living beast and on the summit of the whole construction at a very high elevation was seated cross-legged on a bearskin a very old person smoking his calumet at his side on another rosinante was mounted an old goody probably his wife seated in the same manner on the top of sacks and bags that contained all sorts of roots dried beans and fruits grains and berries in short all such comestibles as the barren mountains and the beautiful valleys afford these they carried to their winter encampment sometimes we have seen a whole family on the same animal each according to his age the children in front the women next and the men behind on two occasions i saw thus mounted five persons 
of whom two at least had the appearance of being as able to carry the poor horse as the horse was to support the weight of these two sochicos gentlemen some places on the bear river exhibit great natural curiosities a square plain of a few acres in extent presents an even surface of fuller's earth of pure whiteness like that of marble and resembling a field covered with dazzling snow situated near this plain are a great many springs differing in size and temperature several of them have a slight taste of soda and the temperature of these is cold the others are of a milk-warm temperature and must be wholesome perhaps they are not inferior to the celebrated waters of the spa or of the lime springs in belgium i am inclined to believe so though i am not firm in the opinion at all events they are surrounded by the mountains over which our wagons found it so difficult to pass i therefore invite neither sick nor sound to test them in the same locality there is a hole in the ground out of which air and water escape alternately the earth for some distance around resounds like an immense vault and is apt to frighten the solitary traveller as he passes along it was here that we left bear river on the fourteenth of august our wagons having proceeded ten hours without intermission arrived at the outlet of a defile which seemed to us the end of the world on our right and left were frightful mountains in our rear a road which we were by no means tempted to retrace in front a passage through which rushed a torrent but so small that the torrent itself seemed with difficulty to force its way our beasts of burthen were for the first time exhausted murmurs arose against the captain who however was imperturbable and as he never shrunk from difficulties advanced to reconnoitre the ground in a few moments he made us a sign to approach one hour after we had surmounted every obstacle for we had traversed the highest chain of the rocky mountains and were nearly in sight of fort hall on the evening previous to the departure of the camp from the soda springs i directed my course towards the fort to make a few necessary arrangements the young francis xavier was my only companion we were soon involved in a labyrinth of mountains and about midnight we were on the summit of the highest chain my poor guide being able to see nothing through the darkness but frightful precipices was so pitifully embarrassed that after veering about for a while like a weathercock he confessed himself lost that was not a place nor was it a time to wander at random i therefore took what i considered the only alternative that of waiting for the morning sun to extricate us from our embarrassment wrapped up in my blanket and with my saddle for a pillow i stretched myself upon the rock and immediately fell into a sound sleep early the next morning we descended by a small cleft in the rocks which the obscurity of the night had concealed and arrived on a plain watered by the new port one of the tributaries of snake river we trotted or galloped over fifty miles in the course of the day the whole way presented evident remains of volcanic eruptions piles and veins of lava were visible in all directions and the rocks bore marks of having been in a state of fusion the river in its whole length exhibits a succession of beaver ponds emptying into each other by a narrow opening in each dike thus forming a fall of between three and six feet all these dikes are of stone evidently the work of the water and of the same character and substance as the stalactites found in some caverns we arrived late in the evening within half a mile of the fort being unable to see our way in the darkness and not knowing where we were we encamped for the night among the bushes near the margin of a small brook i have the honour to be reverend father provincial your most humble and obedient servant and son p j de smet s j End of letter 5